I'm happy to be here. Um, I think fear is a very interesting topic, especially today, um, where we are facing all sorts of interesting challenges in the world. Um, fear is difficult to define because we don't like it. We push it aside, but I believe it to be um, something that affects the physiology of our body, our brain, and creates um, a constriction in behaving or acting in an intelligent way towards whatever it is that we're facing. So we are compromised in our attitude, in our feeling, in our approach to a situation. And this was important previously, you know, it's the fight or flight reaction to situations that we have to deal with. Um, but life is more complex, so fear becomes, I believe, subconscious. Um, and we have all sorts of thoughts and feelings that we are afraid of, that we push aside and don't want to face. And hence, we have a build-up of fear reactions in our body known as stress and anxiety, which is very common today in the world. And we just don't know what to do with it, um, but it's there and we have to deal with it. And usually the way we deal with it is through forgetting who we truly are in this moment and pushing aside the qualities that make us beautiful human beings in the desperate hope that we can get away from this stress or painful situation which is supposedly somewhere, but it's actually inside of ourselves, so we can't get away. I think it's important to ground oneself and understand that fear is a physiological reaction, so we have to deal with it um, in a real way. You know, it's not, no good pushing aside the fact that the body is uncomfortable with stress. Um, and there are some very specific um, approaches to dealing with that. And one is meditation, which I teach here in Ljubljana, in the School of Meditation. Um, and that is how to deal with whatever um, is inside of yourself in a way that is more healthy. So the first step is saying, OK, I have this anxiety inside of myself. What, what can I do with it? You can't push it aside, which is what most people do. I have to find something that helps this anxiety relax. And so meditation is a step-by-step -step process whereby we relax the physiolo physiological aspects of the body that um, are stressed in very beautiful, easy, step-by-step -step ways that anyone can learn. I wish people would teach this to children because they're so enjoyable um, and so simple. And once learnt, it's like riding a bicycle, uh, it becomes automated. So this is the first step, how to relax the physiological part of your physical being so that the fight and flight reaction that normally happens in, in the body isn't overwhelming you. And once you do this, then you can connect more deeply to parts of yourself that are really being communicated and ways to approach such um, a physiological reaction that is positive. So yes, then we have something to learn from fear. We, we learn to empower ourselves and not to be enslaved by the reactions that are based usually on the outside that then create an internal reaction where we are empowered to see that we can change our reality no matter what is going on, even if the stress in the body is so bad that it makes us want to run away from ourselves or from whatever threat, the tiger, lion that is out there. Um, and once we understand this, um, we can, we have more energy that is free to go deeper into communicating to what is really creating this situation. And usually it is an attitude. So I believe that fear helps us understand our attitude towards life. I understand what you're saying and I think the first thing to do is to understand if your attitude is negative. Because most people don't really see this because of course it's difficult to see things about yourself. but. A lot of what creates the reality on the outside is our own attitude. And if we bring fear into the job, for example, if we're anxious because we look at the situation and think, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm a victim to my own sense of, can I manage to do the job in a way that 
people will be happy about or will respect me because I'm doing a good job. And if the negative attitude of self-criticism or doubting or victimizing yourself pushes you to see things in a negative perspective, then that attitude already will have so much energy, it will create a negative on the outside. So perhaps it is a warning, but maybe the warning is not so much about the job. This is what you have to establish first. It's about, you know, maybe you are being challenged to open up to a part of yourself that is not victim, that is not fear, that is not an attitude of self-criticism. So when you begin to do this, and there is a process of doing this in a way that is very, like meditation is very easy to learn and once applied becomes a habit, um, then you can see, is my intuition still telling me that the job is a negative? Because sometimes we are intuitive people um, as we are and we have subtle senses that pick up on things that the mind doesn't quite understand and we sense that we are choosing the job not because we want to choose the job but because perhaps there is a program in our mind that says oh you have to work doing something because you have all these commitments and things that you have to look after and work is the only way and the only way is to work in a certain hard push yourself down a path that's not really aligned with your higher purpose and you are compulsed out of obligations to do something. So maybe your intuition is letting you know about this and then you can ask yourself, is there a better job? So it's not to be afraid but to look for something that is aligned with your true purpose in life, with your qualities and with your strengths. We live in a culture that I believe is fear-based um, and if you look at history um, our culture is based on a, um, an understanding of the world that comes from religion originally. The way we see things means that man dominates the earth, dominates its resources, because man has to evolve in a way that is um, strong and powerful, and not in cooperation with the energies of the earth or the energies inside of oneself. So uh, our culture is always imposing this idea that you have to push yourself. I believe it to be different. I think you have to be in touch with yourself. And that is what the true meaning of freedom is. When you're in touch with yourself, you're able to practice freedom in the world and whatever you're doing in relationship to the earth and its resources. But the media has this thing. And as you say, where there is this subconscious or perhaps more conscious today um, definition of what life means, and that is terrorists, um, losing job, the economy um, getting worse, be afraid. There is a subconscious sort of attitude, be afraid because we are living through famine. And so our fear-based reactions of survival, fight or flight, overwhelm our sort of conscious way of seeing what is really going on and we get attracted to the negative um, simply because w we are wondering how to resolve it. So we listen more to negative news, we listen to gossip around us and we disempower our freedom, which is of course from inside, I believe. It is a state of non-attachment, so you are free of your attachments to all these negatives that are being put out there not only in the media, but even in the way people are reacting to each other nowadays. You know, there is fear, I don't want to lose my job, and then you're communicating this to your friend, oh, what will happen if the economy is working in such a way where our company is not doing so well, and there's just a whole mass hysteria. But I believe we don't need to do anything, we need to let go of that physiological reaction that creates an attitude of negativity. So. What to do, as you were saying, when all these outer um, states of mind um, and cultural belief systems are attacking us, um, I believe that we have to be free of them. And that is the freedom. <laughs> and to be free of them, you have to understand where to go. And if you're not out there caught by the manipulations that are of whatever um, fear-based attitudes, then you have to come back to be in touch with
parts of yourself that empower you to be free. And the process of doing that is quite quite a process, but it's an enjoyable process because how can you be free if you're caught in fear? And how can you be happy if you're caught in fear? But if you are connected to what I believe every human being has, which is a space of love and a space of happiness and a space of joy, when in connection to everything, to the earth, its elements and people from that space of freedom, then I believe happiness is the natural outcome because we are born happy. So we can remain happy if we purify the environment from all these manipulations that you were speaking of. It's easier to answer who's the person stopping us. That is usually ourselves. And I believe this attitude of self-criticism where we are always trying to be the best or number one, what I call the ego, um, and it is fed by so many aspects, outer and inner, um, too complex perhaps to speak about today, but one of the main feeding mechanisms of self-criticism is this sense of trying to be number one, trying to be something rather than being yourself. And this is a taught um, attitude and also an emotional, mental way of seeing things that is highlighted in social um, social situations, family situations, uh, it's highlighted to be in touch with this driving force rather than being in touch with yourself. So self-criticism, I believe, to be the number um, one reason. One way to work with this, if, if I may, um, is to b bring a positive aspect of yourself into the picture um, rather than focus on what you want focus on what you are and empower yourself with those aspects that are there that you're not taking notice of and often I ask people to do a simple exercise um, just to make it more tangible and that is to find ten qualities that they love about themselves and most people find it very hard to do this <laughs> because they're so critical of themselves you know they they are always trying to do things that are beyond any um, obvious way of dealing with the situation. Um, so to find those qualities, I believe, to be very important. Um, but people can't usually find that because, as you say, there are situations outside that are so critical and inside that are so critical that it impedes that freedom to find this more beautiful part of yourself and honor this beautiful part of yourself. I am creative. I am. Um, able to, I'm so good at business, or I'm so good at being a teacher, or I'm so good at this. You know, the criticism impedes that, and you're always looking outside for something better rather than honoring this part of yourself that is needing honoring to be free. So then I say, if you can't find 10 aspects of yourself that you love and that you want to explore more deeply by communicating this to people outside of yourself and people inside of yourself, your little inner child and your um, all, all those interesting aspects, then ask someone about your qualities and ask someone to find ten qualities that they like about you. And that puts the whole perspective in a different setting. Um, you, you can begin to see that freedom is about not looking for something, but honoring something that is inside of you and this gives you a map of those qualities that you can appreciate and if you look at those then the fear is not so important because you're looking at those qualities that are coming from inside the subconscious then moves into alignment with those qualities rather than with this fight or flight um, physiological reaction so you begin to feel happier because we are always happy when we are connected to those beautiful aspects of ourselves. You know, when you are living your purpose in life, happiness comes naturally. There is no need to try to find it in work. And when you are happy doing what you're doing, then work and people around you tend to be, um, tend to, things tend to fall into place. You're creating a different reality than a negative attitude. Well, I believe children to be like a very important 
um, in society, and today they are neglected, but they are neglected because people are too busy. <laughs> you know, so they're too busy trying to be something that they're not. And children learn best by being in front of someone who's doing what they truly are and honoring who they truly are rather than pretending. Um, and teachers probably know this and parents know this, um, but sometimes are too critical and too busy to apply this very simple knowledge of, you know, teach your child by teaching yourself first. And then your child will learn as from the example that you are portraying very clearly to them, not just in words or as concepts, but in, in your action. You know, so if, if you don't have fear, then the child will understand, okay, I can approach the situation differently because my parent is showing me that there is a different way to approach situations. And children have fear. You know, fear is not a is something that is within our evolution because it helped us to survive. So we have to learn positive ways of dealing with them. And if our parents and social culture um, approaches fear from a negative, that's what children learn. And so that information is transmitted subconsciously to children because fear is subconscious. So without knowing it, parents, even though they wish to be positive and they wish to do what is better for the child, their real state of mind is being shown as what it is. You know, if you're afraid and anxious and staying up at night and worried about this or worried about that, your child will pick this up, even to the degree where your body is producing pheromones, because fear produces physiological reactions in the body. And we know, scientists know today, that there are pheromones that are being transmitted into the environment and not only do you learn subconsciously but you also smell fear this is how native people and animals know when things are wrong because they are being on a subconscious level we don't even realize what's going on we are understanding that a situation is dangerous now if you say to a child look it's okay don't worry but at the same time you're exuding these pheromones of fear because you're stressed and full of anxiety, the child will get confused. Here is my parent telling me one thing, but my subconscious is telling me something else. And this is where we learn to dishonor ourselves because we then get so caught in concepts and the idea of what we want to do rather than being connected to what is really going on. And looking at that, as you say, looking at fear or whatever criticism we have of situations inside or outside as a challenge that we can transcend and showing that to our children. Many people don't do this and children are confused and hence why we have rebellious teenagers and very unhappy children to the degree where suicide today is very common in many Western cultures where children just feel that there is nowhere to go. There is no meaning or purpose behind going to university and getting life organized in that way where there's just fear. The whole basis of creating a life is based on, you know, you have to do this in case there is a threat out there. And there is no joy anymore because there is no honoring in what you are. It's a chasing of an idea. So, yeah, I don't know if this answers your question, but at least highlights some aspects, you know, of teaching children through example rather than just words or concepts. Um, I don't think e either is right or wrong, but um, I do find that the idea of positive thinking um, to be limited, you know, it's not the whole story. Um, for example, I know that some people tell me, you know, you, all you have to do is think your troubles away. For example, if you are afraid, you just say, there is nothing to be afraid of, or I'm not afraid. But it doesn't work, because we know that the mind, as soon as you say, I am not, already the subconscious aspect of the mind is attached to the I am not part, and is seeing the whole process as negative. And so, even though we're saying positive words, the subconscious fear is still there. It may seem on the surface to be going away, but deep inside what is really causing the disharmony inside of oneself, 
still comes up with excuses to justify its, its own existence, saying, for example, oh, is it really okay because you know, it's not clear to me what is being said in, in words is not clear to me because the um, subconscious is so very clever. It's like a little monkey it jumps from one thing to another. And some people say, oh, you have to say it in a more positive way. I am calm or I'm free or fear. But already the subconscious mind will ask, am I fear? Uh, am I free of fear? You know, it's clever. So I say it's best to go even more deeply and imagine something that is truly positive and that the best is to imagine a quality within yourself that we've been speaking about and highlight that to the subconscious so that the positive aspect of yourself, the virtue that you have or the quality that you have becomes highlighted in opposite to the fear that, or the criticism or the negativity that is being um, experienced in that moment. And the way we have to do this is very um, practical. We, it's not enough to imagine it as a concept or a positive thought. We have to begin to sense it. So we have to use the senses to smell, taste, feel the whole experience. And this is a process of visualization or meditation which is practiced um, very, very easily. Um, I won't go deeply into it just to highlight the specifics. Um, and then you can go further. It's not enough just to imagine and feel, but it is important to interact with that feeling and bring an active feeling response to the negative that the mind is experiencing or the emotions are experiencing. That I believe to be very, very useful. And that is the secret, but gone a little bit deeper into you know, the way to practice positive thinking. And the other was life happens. So you might as well, how did you put it? You might as well just change. This is more the work that I do, uh, where we look at the qualities within yourself, the human qualities that are forgotten, and bring a p an attitude that's very positive from those qualities, rather than trying to change it by bringing in com concepts that change the um, fear-based thought or the fear-based feeling. So it's not enough to say just calm, but you, you have to bring in something from yourself that changes your attitude to the situation. And I believe that to be the core. You know, if you change your response to a situation, but it has to be not out of fear. You can't just change your response because you say, I'm not enjoying feeling fear, so I just want to feel free of fear. It has to be because you go deeper and find a quality that's inside of yourself that says there is a reason not to feel fear because I'm honoring this quality and it comes out in my attitude, it comes out in my response to the situation. For example, calmness. You, you could be just a calm person because you meditate or because you've learned relaxation techniques or because you are not attached to those situations outside that create fear and that quality empowers you in many situations. So your attitude already changes those things that normal people would not even think about changing because they just react to them. But because you are calm, already your state of awareness is able to see that you are able, you have choices. You don't have to react to the situation. You can do many more things. But how can you have that choice if you're not calm? And hence why it is important to find those qualities that give meaning to life. And I believe that those qualities are universal, so it's not something that is just taught, but it's something that is highlighted through inner work and transforming old paradigms to new paradigms where you can live your life from a state of joy and happiness, which I believe you're born with.